son is 19 now. So when he was about two years old, I decided I wanted to make some books because I did not see any books about kids like him. And so rather than complain about it, I decided to do something. So that's, that's how I got started. And initially, it was just learning the craft and what was what and who was who was who and all of that good stuff. And that prompted me to go back to school and finish my art degree, uh, which I did, and then start sending my work out. And that was around 2007, 2008. And then I wasn't able to get, you know, an actual book deal until 2013. So it's been a, a I, long journey. Thank you for mentioning that because I think a lot of people, especially when they're starting out, they don't really, you know, they just see you now as successful and you have these books that are out and they don't really necessarily see the long journey and they get maybe frustrated if it, if they don't get an agent or a deal right away. So that's really great that you mentioned, mentioned that because I think people don't necessarily see that. So I'm, I'm curious because I know you do the art and the, and the text when you go to create your book, like say with Fresh Juice, which came first? Did you start writing the text first? Did you start doing the illustrations or was it kind of a back and forth? It's both usually. I mean, for this book in particular, it was it was both. Sometimes it'll be, I'm, I'm thinking of an idea and I'll write out a bunch of sentences or paragraphs or an actual manuscript. And then sometimes it'll be an image that inspires the story or makes me want to create. And for this one, it was a little bit of both and, and definitely a lot of back and forth as far as like, how, how can I make an image that is interesting? I actually did a version of this book uh, back then, back in 2008. And, um, you know, it wasn't as good as I thought it was <laughs> later on looking back at it. But um, I, I did this uh, several illustrations and wrote, you know, an actual manuscript a long time ago and it didn't work. And so I put it down, worked on other stories and worked on uh, other projects and just really kind of owned my craft a little bit more and I'm still learning. But uh, yeah, it's always a little, right. it, it depends on well, the so story. So how about this one? Say. What was the inspiration behind the book? Maybe you can tell us a little bit more for those who, who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, sure. So Fresh Juice, Hugo Fresco is a, a new picture book that just came out yesterday, uh, me and Lo books. And the story is basically, uh, it's a, it was inspired by me and my son. We were living in Brooklyn at the time and we would go get, um, you know, fruits and vegetables and greens and, and make juice at home. And it was like a way of doing something with him that was like a healthy thing. And I grew up with uh, a father and a stepfather who were also juicers and they liked, you know, going on like a healthy lifestyle. And so it was really cool to pass that on to him. And that is what inspired the story. The characters are somewhat, um, uh, what's the word? They they look a little bit like me and him, but it, it's really like based on our story. And then I tried to make it look and, like- um, you know, I wanna go back like, to when you were talking about that you're creating books that you wish that you had as a kid. And of course, that you want for your own kids as mm -hmm. well, especially ones that feature mixed race kids and families. Why, why, why is that representation yeah. so important? Like, what does it mean for a kid to read a book where they can see themselves or their families reflected in it? Well, if you see yourself in reflected in a story, um, it, it gives you something to be like, hey, that that looks interesting, or it gives you like mm -hmm. a, a spark of, of interest and <laughs> it makes you wonder. Like, it, it could be a, a comic book, it could be a picture book, it could be a middle grade book, but to have I mean, you know, kids, all people judge books by a cover. And so if you see something on the cover that looks really cool, especially if it's like you or your mom or your dad or someone you grew up with or people you know, you're much more likely to pick it up and be like, what's this about? That looks like so-and-so. And so for a very long time, that has not been the case in the kids' book world when it comes to people of color. Uh, it's much harder to tell if it's like a queer child, but the the meat and the bulk of these stories have not been very representative of all the people who live in the U.S. And so when I was a kid, that was definitely the case for me. I, I didn't see things that I wanted to gravitate towards. The things that I gravitated towards were like hip hop albums, album covers. And when I really think about it, you know, part of it is what you find on your own. It's what teachers and adults around you push you towards. But also a big part of it is what your peers do. And so if your peers are reading cool books and be like hey this is the babysitters club or this is judy bloom or whoever it was um yeah cool let me check that out but if it's not something that they're into they're not going to be talking about it with you and they're definitely not going to be recommending any books to you so you know 
yeah, it, it's it's important for me to make books like that. So that way, parents, um, kids, families, teachers, librarians, they they will be able to see themselves and see them. Um, I love that like you're them. already bringing in this element of community that a lot of the ways we get interested in books is because we have people recommending it to us or we see other people reading it. And that's a thread that definitely runs through your yep. work is about community. And what do you think is the role that children's books have? I mean, you kind of talked about this a little bit to, to reflect the communities that as they exist and to nurture them, especially communities that are underrepresented and, uh, underrepresented. and especially if you could talk about how this fit fits into larger picture of working for social justice because some people may not see like how to what role children's books have to play and um, in bringing about a more just world. Yeah, well, I mean, this story fresh juice on the on the surface is about healthy eating and about a healthy form of lifestyle. But um, at the core of it, the ingredients that they get to make their juice and to really um, kind of do something for their health is is helped and assisted and aided by lots of people in their community so the people at the farmers market the people at the grocery store the people at the cooperative and even um their extended family um the the main character little boy art has a stepfather named dylan and he's someone who comes to their aid as well and so there, there's an idea in like american society especially that you know you have to do it all on your own and that it's very individualist and it's all about me and it's all about my you know my folks and my family and that's it and i think moving forward you know and and traditionally like the way we have really taken care of one another and taken care of ourselves is by helping one another and like really lending a hand and, and you saw that during the pandemic people making mutual aid groups where if you needed something folks were willing to lend it or lend a hand and i think in order for us to survive you know it's it's worth it for us to to be a community and to share like a community but also to have lots of different people in that community like a diversity of folks because everybody's going to come with a different ingredient or a different skill set or a different um thing that we can you know make useful and conversely whatever it is you individually bring to the table is really important and useful for your community um just so they can get to know you and to right. you know, and find I out what it is that you do in, in this book you use the metaphor of the juice and all the different ingredients that go into it to make kids think about it. I mean, like you said, on the surface, it's just about making this healthy juice, but they're getting these elements from all these different people. And, yep. and like you said, kind of seeing their own importance too, right? Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, most, it's interesting definitely. too, because, so I'm not that far from here. I'm up in Sacramento. And my impression of Oakland has always yeah. been that it has more of a like these vibrant communities and is more focused on maybe activism. How do you think that influenced your writing or your perspective? Because I think you said that also, uh, or I've read that you're that you were raised by student activists and who were kind of brought up in that in that um, environment. Yeah, I mean, I think the Bay Area is not unique or Oakland is not unique in the sense that if you're if you're in a coastal city that um, has a port has like a, a long standing history of um, both goods and people migrating to it to get to other places, some of them will go and some of them will stay. And so places all over the, the world like that, where you got a good melting pot of folks coming. Uh, and I think because of that, there's just been a, a rich history of ideas and activism and um, uh, groundbreaking work as far as like social justice or art or, or music and I'm I'm biased of course because I'm from Oakland I'm from the Bay but I think that happens in so many places and it's not unique to us even though we have a lot of you know cool stuff here <laughs> um, yeah I think that that is something whether I like it or not kind of it creeps into my work and it's something I intentionally will go back to to think about you know Am, am I staying true to, to my upbringing or my thoughts or and, and also am I am I growing? Am I thinking about new ways to illustrate it or, or write it down or to make it um, not so you're beating someone over the head, but that you're making a good story that's worth reading and wanting. To How do you feel like your craft has changed? Like you talked about um, that you've learned a lot about like the illustrations and I noticed that you made that you made a lot of resources available to anybody else that's getting started on it. Like you had this whole thing of tips for illustrators. I think it was that um, yeah. how do you think your your craft has developed or uh, in this journey because you said you talk, started like maybe 2007 so how has that evolved or yeah. how is your thing and where do you think you're going next 
Um, I think that it's involved as far as like making a living because you know it's one thing to like be a creative person and make art and another to be commissioned or hired or to work for someone else doing that and one thing that they don't teach often in art schools because we we live in a capitalist capitalistic society is how to uh, manage your finances and like how to take control of the the money that you bring in and also to share some of that knowledge with other artists like you so that way you can both benefit from you know the tips and tricks so i think um you know if i could use a bay area word game a lot of people have given me a lot of game and knowledge and i want to be able to pass that on and just and just share it and as far as like changing i think i'm always changing i'm always trying to try something new and i think i i try to look back at my old work and it's often i'll be like not the happiest looking at the older work but i think it's a sign of growth like the more you keep trying to try new stuff the more you grow and so in the future i just hope to keep trying to make better stories you know every time i, I get an understanding of how to do them the type of story i want to do next gets to be a little bit more ambitious and so uh, the 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 skill right. level is if, met by you, as you're story, ready for the next know? challenge then you go to something more challenging i do you have something you're working exactly. on i mean Maybe that's a bad question to ask because you just had a book that literally just came out. But do you have something else you're working on or something? You're yeah, no, that's all good. Yeah, I, I always um, I mean, that's one of the tips about being an artist, too, is like always be like if I could use a cooking analogy, it's like you got something on the stove, you're kind of prepping something, you're eating a meal at the same time. Like I'm, I'm always working on new things. But yeah, that the one that just came out is the, the well, latest and greatest. And one last question before we let you go is I also love that you always make your books available in English and Spanish. Why was that something that was important to you? Yeah. So Spanish is my second language. I started learning it when my son was born, um, learning from his mom, learning from the school that he went to and looking up words on my own. And I think whether you learn Spanish or Mandarin or uh arabic whatever language you learn like it's it's important i think for me in this country in the united states to kind of make that or share that value because when you leave the u.s and you go other places it's really common for people to speak multiple languages and like be trading with and talking to and uh, meeting with lots of people from different uh perspectives and it's only here that they're very much like only english english only and i think it's really encouraging to see within the past decade more and more schools all across the U.S. trying to have a bilingual program and and really um, uh, what's the word supporting that. And I think it's not only learning how to speak in another word, but see another worldview. And we need more and of that. And somebody people joining us actually you know. from Spain. Welcome. <laughs> thanks for thanks for. Oh, welcome. well, thank you, thank you for joining us and. Um, Best wishes on, on this book and on your future books. It, it's such a wonderful story. And especially the way you've incorporated all these elements into what on the surface may seem like kind of a, a simple story is really beautiful. So thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. And anybody who joined us late, you can yeah. see this all on Instagram in a few minutes and later on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, thank you to uh, Multicultural read your world because um it's really important the work that y'all do to kind of spread a diversity of stories and that's why i reached out uh, to work with them well, so when, many years well, thank ago. you we so, appreciate that you. and we appreciate all that you do and thanks to everybody who's watching because that means that there's support for diverse children's books which we always appreciate thank you. bye everybody yeah peace